hello students i'm here with another video from the third chapter of class 7th from ncert book the name of the chapter is fiber to fabric before starting today's video i would like to tell you that till now we have discussed about the wool yielding animals and today i'm going to discuss about the processing of wool so for processing of wool it there are many steps as you have seen that wool is also a kind of a fiber which has to be knitted in the form of sweaters and shawls it has to be weaved in the form of these finished clothes now this uh, these finished clothes are because uh, they are made they are the product of a long process which involves the following steps now these are the steps as shown in the flow chart that the first first step of processing of wool involves shearing of wool then it requires scoring then sorting of wool then dyeing into different colors and then rolling of the wool yarn fine now we go on to these steps in details one by one so the first step is in processing of fiber of wool into a wool thread the step first involves shearing now what is shearing the fleece of a sh of the sheep along with a thin layer of skin is removed from its body okay this process is called shearing okay what happens if the uh, if your if the hair uh, has grown what do you do you go and have a haircut is, isn't it so in the same manner these hair are are uh, which are present on the body of the animal once they are used utilized in the winters they are useless in summers okay because they are going to give them they are going to increase the temperature of the body and that will be a very harmful that will also give a harmful effect on the animals during summers so it is removed uh, with the help of the process called shearing as there are razors and or the nowadays machines are also used for the process of shearing so in this shearing the fleece of the sheep is removed using the razors using a long using long razors okay now in this the fleece uh, fleece of the sheep along with the thin layer of skin is removed from its body okay the machines similar to those which are used to by the barbers are used to shave off hair usually these hairs are removed during hot weather okay now i have told you why it is removed during hot we hot weather because they are not required in the hot weather okay you require sweater in the uh, winters isn't it you don't require them in the summers so you keep them in inside a inside your bags isn't it you, you don't use it so similarly these animals don't want to use the hair during the summers so they are removed and that is utilized for making wool so this enables the sheep to survive without their protective cover in the in the uh, coat of their hair the hair provides the woolen fiber fibers now woolen fibers are then processed to obtain woolen yarns shearing does not hurt the sheep please remember that shearing there it is not going to hurt the sheep why it is not going to hurt it because uh, as you do you have a hair cut uh, do you cry during hair your hair cut no we cannot we do not cry because it is not hurting you isn't it similarly the sheep they are also not uh, they are also not hurt when the barbers are going to remove the hair because this the uppermost layer of the skin is the the dead skin the uppermost layer is the dead skin and with the with this dead skin it is removed the hair is also removed okay so this was step number 1 the next is the step number second after shearing what is being done so this uh, uh, this hair of the sheep is it is not very uh, i mean it is very dirty okay it is not very clean so it has to be cleaned by washing so what is being done the scoring process is done what is the scoring process in the scoring process the sheared skin with the hair is thoroughly washed in the tanks to remove grease dirt and dust as you uh, as we also when we move in the summers or during uh, when we move in the summers or when we move in the uh, in the um, in during summers or even when we are moving in the uh, normal weather also then also dust particles they settle down in the hair so what do you do you all you go and wash you have a bath you have a head bath and you wash your hair so that it becomes it is free from the dust and the dirt similarly this sheared skin is also washed in the tank so that it is removed uh, so that the grease dirt and the dust is removed and this process of washing of hair is known as scoring nowadays scoring is also done with the help of machines okay next is step number 3 in which 
after scoring what is done after scoring the sorting of the hair is done so the third step is third step is sorting after scoring and sorting uh, sorting is done this hair this hairy skin is sent to the factory where the hair of the different textures are separated or sorted means they are uh, they are separated on the basis of their colors so after uh, this okay so this is done because we are having the hair of different colors as we have seen in the animals which are going to give you give the wool they have different colors so these hair having different textures is being separated so that it is be it becomes very easy for the uh, person to dye in the different kinds of color in the different kinds of textures so it is being sorted out fine next is the fourth step the fourth step is the small fluffy fibers called burrs now uh, you have seen when uh, when we wear the sweater what happens on the wool wool bubbles come up isn't it after several uses the bubbles come up so these bubbles are going to be removed so these small fluffy burrs they are removed by picking by picking out from the hair okay so this these are same burrs which is sometime appears on your sweater okay as i have told you that after wearing the sweater for a, for some times what happens the small small bubbles come comes on that sweater so these bubbles are called burrs so these burrs are removed and these fibers are scored again and then they are dried okay they are washed again and then they are dried after that this wool is ready to drawn into fibers now the step number 5th comes in the step number 5th dyeing is done what is the meaning of dyeing dyeing means it is being colored so you see that the hair of the sheep is only gray or white in color it is generally black brown or white in color okay but you see that sweaters are of different color it could be red it could be orange it could be yellow it could be uh, green so how are these colors colorful sweaters are obtained it is it is obtained by coloring the wool so this coloring is the step of dyeing so this dyeing is done the fibers can be dyed in the various colors as the natural fleece of sheep is black and white okay so this is this i have told you that the colors of the sheep the hair is only black and white or grayish kind of uh, brown uh, brown color so we have limited colors so we dye them in several different colors so that we could get the variety of sweaters now the next step is the sixth step where the fibers are straightened they are combed and they are rolled into yarns the long thread a long fibers are made into wool and the uh, wool and these wools are used for making sweaters and shawl okay now the sorter fiber are spun in woven into the sorted fibers are then spun spun into uh, sp spun and woven into the clothes okay as you could see that wool is obtained now it is colored after coloring it is being after uh, after coloring it is being uh, formed in the form of wool yarns and then these yarns are very long so they are used for making sweaters and shawls and the various other woolen clothes okay so this is how the complete process of processing of wool is done okay now uh, we have to one uh, one thing i have to tell you that there is certain occupational hazards um, to, to the people those who are working in the sorters industry okay or they are working in the uh, in the um, sorting of wool or they are working in the wool industry so what kind of occupational hazard is there there is something harmful in it what is harmful now in wool industry it is an important it is an important means of livelihood okay so these wool industries are very much important now uh, for many people in our country but sorter's job is very risky as sometimes they get infected by a bacterium called anthrax so uh, when the person who is doing sorter's job it can be the person can uh, it could be affected by the bacterium called anthrax anthrax okay it is a bacterium so this anthrax is going to um, settle down in the lungs of the uh, so sorter or the person who is sorting the wool because uh, these bacterium uh, these bacteriums are present in the uh, skin of sheep okay which is very fatal and it is also called that is why this disease is called sorter's disease such risk is faced by the worker and in the industries and it is also known as occupational hazard so hazard means it is a very um, it is a kind it is a very bad thing it is a dangerous thing uh, doing during the occupation okay occupation means the work which is done by the people so these people they are at a risk of having the disease called sorter's disease so uh, 
they should take proper precautions while sorting or doing the job in such kinds of industries okay so here uh, next thing what uh, next fiber which we have to study is one more fiber animal fiber we have to study okay so before that i must just show you the picture which is taken from your ncrt book there one sheep is there and the next step is the sorting okay this is shearing shearing after shearing it is uh, the wool is being sorted out after sorting the school no, this is first shearing first step is shearing second step is scoring after scoring this is being uh, sorting sorted sorting is done after sorting this is uh, then after that removal removal of burrs is done then dyeing is done okay dyeing after that yarn or yarn is made or it is you could say the process of rolling okay this is rolling fine so this is how the wool uh, the thread with the hair is turned into wool and then wool is being turned into the form of sweaters now next thing which we have to study is the fiber of silk now uh, do you find any difference between the fiber of silk and the wool is there any difference yes there is a difference what is the main difference between silk and wool wool is uh, wool is very uh, i want to say just that wool is not very shiny but silk is having a shiny appearance okay so have you ever seen a silk cloth or silk silk sari it has a very shiny appearance so this is obtained from another animal which is obtained from animal i would rather say it is obtained from an insect which is called silk moth okay so we have to study about the first we have to study about the life cycle of silk moth so these silk fibers are also made from animal fibers these are the uh, silk worms spin the silk fibers so these silk worm they are going to spin the silk fiber now this rearing of silk worms for obtaining the silk is called sericulture it is called seri culture so it is a process in which you take care of these silk moths so that they could become worms and then they could uh, spun the silk thread for you people and then we can take these silk threads and we can uh, weave them or spun them in the form of various different clothes okay so let's study the life cycle of silk moth first so the silk moth in which the female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs after that this eggs are hatched to give out the, the they hatch and silk worms are formed okay silk larvae they are larvae are formed so after this then the third step silk worm eats mulberry leaves so when these larvae comes means caterpillar comes so these are going to eat mulberry leaves and they grow in size during this phase they shed their skin four times and this is called molting so uh, whenever the silk worm is there it is going to pass from one stage to another stage it is going to shed its skin how many times four times so this process of shedding of skin is known as molting after what happens after this uh, molting the silk worm begins to spun their cocoon okay so this cocoon is formed after this cocoon inside this cocoon the silk worm is there it is it stops feeding and it starts developing a cocoon which is its outer covering is made up of silk thread so this cocoon is useful for making the silk fiber now how is this made we'll study in detail in the next slide so what happens after this i want to tell you that fifth step is silk farmers collect these cocoons and these filaments are obtained from the cocoons by the process called reeling and reeling so this reeling is done after that the silk fibers are then spun into silk thread and that silk thread is used for making silk fabrics so this is how a silk thread is converted into in the form of the fiber so now let us study these uh, steps of life cycle one by one so this is the first step where processing of silk involves the um, involves the laying of eggs first one is the first step towards silk re rearing uh, um, silk is the rearing of silk worm which is done in the mulberry leaves bearing a fresh crop of leaves okay so mulberry leaves is the favorite food for the silk worm so these silk worm they are going to eat up many mulberry leaves and they live over it 
and the eggs are also laid over the silk silk uh, this mulberry leaves okay so the hundreds of eggs are laid by female silk moth and it is stored carefully on the strips of cloth or uh, paper and then they are sold to the silk worm farmers okay naturally also it is obtained so it is uh, once it has been recognized that uh, this silk worms they are very useful for the person for the people so the people started farming so the farmers who are the silk worm farmers they are they purchase the strips of uh, clothes having eggs now these eggs are kept under hygienic and suitable conditions of temperature and humidity means rainfall okay so moisture is also controlled and then temperature is also controlled for the proper growth of these eggs now what happens after some time what happens they are warmed in the suit under suitable temperature they are incubated in the suitable temperature and these enables the larvae to hatch from the eggs so from the eggs larvae are formed these larvae are known as caterpillars or silkworms so after once this these eggs hatch hatch they develop into small worm like structure and these are called silkworms okay or they are you know, in the common language they are called caterpillars so they are stored in they are kept in the bamboo trays and they are sh they are served with freshly chopped mulberry leaves as i have told you that these silkworm are voracious feeders of the mulberry leaves and they love to eat these mulberry leaves so they eat day and night so see in the next line also it is written they eat day and night and increase lots of lot in their size okay so they grow they grow in uh, in their size why well, how did how do they grow because they are eating so much so uh, the mulberry leaves okay now uh, based upon the types of based upon the types of silk uh, moth means uh, what kind of uh, what kind of texture of the silk they are uh, they are giving so many kinds of silk silk is there so based upon their textures it is coarse uh, or smooth or shiny the silk is of tussar silk munga silk and kosa silk and many other names are also there but most common is them the is the mulberry silk why it is most common because mul uh, mulberry leaves are obtained very commonly and they are uh, they could be cultured very easily so mulberry silk moth is going to be cultured very easily so which is helpful in giving which is helpful in giving the uh, mulberry silk okay now next step is after 20 or 5 to 30 days these silkworm stops eating and they move into the tiny chamber of bamboo uh, bamboo in the tray having small racks or twigs to spun their cocoons okay they just take the help of the twigs or the leaves which are kept here which helps uh, which helps them to spun their cocoon okay one thread is tied over these bamboo sticks corners of the bamboo sticks and they start weaving their thread now they start swing, uh, spinning their cocoons now this is how these cocoons are made so these you can you could see that there are so many cocoons uh, in this picture so these cocoons are nothing but they are the silk fibers which is spun over the the silk moth okay so this silk moth start uh, develops in the form of silk uh, worm and these silk worm start eating and once they stop eating they just go and uh, they just go and uh, take they just wanted to take rest after so much so eating so what do they do they just take a side and in the bamboo stick they get the support of these bamboo sticks and they start spinning the cocoon over them so co cocoon is nothing but it is there a uh, house where they live okay now the these silk worms spin the cocoon inside which they de further develops and silk moth development of the silk moth take place once these cocoon is completely develop uh, completely spun then what happens it sits inside it and then it it is going to develop in the form of silk moth okay silk moth silk moth is a just type of a it is just it looks like a butterfly so these silk moth they are developed inside the cocoon and this cocoon is very useful why it is useful this only this is only the stage which is going to help you to find uh, to give the silk thread now the third step is second step is towards the uh, towards obtaining the silk is the processing of silk now how is this processing of silk done the piles of cocoons means the group of cocoons they are they are obtained they are used for obtaining the silk fibers now they are kept under sun fun, once they are kept under sun or they are directly boiled in the water or they are exposed to the steam for separating the silk fiber so this process is known as reeling of silk this is done using machines 
which unwinds the thread of the fiber of the silk from the cocoon and then they are spun into silk thread so many silk threads are tied together one fiber is going to be tied together to form the thread okay so many threads are uh, so many fibers are tied together to form thread okay now this is uh, in this figure you could see that in the boiling water cocoons are added up in and reeling of the silk is done once uh, this hot water is going to loosen up the threads loosen up the fibers of the silk now each thread is made up of 40 to 50 silk thre uh, silk fibers it is going to be twisted so that it uh, the silk fiber becomes a little bit thick and so that it is very easy for the person to weave now silk yarn is obtained now this yarn is going to send to the industries so that these silk and these silk industries the person could uh, weave the cloth okay now next thing is that so this is how the spinning of the uh, silk th threads are being done now i will just tell you that how is this discovery of the silk has taken place so this discovery of the silk has taken place very long back and uh, i must just tell you the story that in uh, in the see this discovery is still unknown according to an old chinese le legend the empress called si lung chi was asked to asked by the emperor wang si to find the ca find the cause of the damage of the leaves of the mulberries okay so there was a tree in the garden um, mulberry tree in the garden and the emperor saw that these trees have a very damaged leaves and who is damaging these leaves so they were asked to find out so they saw that there is a there is a, a very tiny uh, they saw that there is a spinning uh, some cocoons are there which are spinning shiny cocoons over them so uh, there were worms they are spinning shiny cocoons over them now accidentally a cocoon dropped in the cup of tea and now what happens when the person who in the queen in which in whose cup that uh, in whose tea with was that cocoon fallen down so the queen what did she do she took uh, she uh, took uh, out that cocoon so the threads entangled in the delicate threads were entangled in her fingers so she saw that it could be separated from the cocoon and they are very shiny so silk industry began in china and it was kept uh, a close uh, closely guarded secret for hundreds of years later later on traders and travelers introduced introduced silk to other countries now this route uh, they travel the route which they travel to obtain the silk is also known as silk route okay so this is how this silk was discovered so processing of silk involves the rearing of silk worm where the female uh, silk moth lays egg then it is developed into caterpillars and then they are going to form cocoons over it they eat voraciously and then what happens then they form cocoons and these cocoons are useful for obtaining the silk fiber now these many silk fibers are twisted together to form a long thread which is uh, very it is not very delicate so it helps in the formation of silk uh, fibers and these silk threads is used for making the different types of uh, silk cloths by the weavers okay so that's all for today's video i will just uh, i'll come up with another videos in the next class also today we have studied about uh, so today we have studied about the processing of wool as well as processing of silk and now uh, this chapter is complete i'll come up with the video in the next lecture that's all for today